be resurrection Sunday. Oh, come on. I dare you to give God the biggest praise you got. He is risen. Oh, you better come on. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, I know some of y'all are like, Sally, is this what your church does every week? I just want to give you a spoiler alert, okay? Around here, we're excited. Like the same way people get excited for the Super Bowl or the NBA playoffs, the same way that people get excited about having a baby or they get excited about getting their new house, all of those things are temporary. The thing we're celebrating today is something that happened eternally. And today is the day we celebrate our Lord and Savior not just dying, not just being in a tomb, I'm getting happy. But on the third day, somebody say the third day, he rose again with all power. And so today we celebrate a risen Savior. Will you give him praise right now? Hallelujah. Hold on, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're like, did that man take Ritalin or something? No, 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 no. I just knew where I was when God found me and his resurrection power found me. And the difference that separates Christianity from every other religion is that everybody else had a God, but when they died, they died. <laughs> when Buddha died, they only can make big statues. When Krishna died, they only had pictures. When, when, uh, y'all don't hear me? When every other God died, they died. But when Christ died, He got up. And today we celebrate the resurrection from your soul. Just give him one more shout of praise. Hallelujah. Yo. Hey, if you are sitting next to somebody or you're around somebody, just tell them he has risen. <laughs> and then say it like this. He has risen indeed. <laughs> I am so grateful that you are joining us for Transformation Church today. There are people watching all over the world and some of you are sitting at your TV screen like this right now. It's like, I ain't heard that much screaming in a long time. Let, let me slow it down and introduce myself. Hello, my name is Michael and I have the awesome opportunity of being the lead pastor of Transformation Church. And today we are celebrating what many call as Easter but we know it's the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And so all I want you to know is that if you're watching this right now, we've prayed for you. We've, we've been praying that something in your life would align, that you would see the promotion or somebody would have invited you and you would get here in this moment because this entire experience is, is so you can know about our risen Savior. And, 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 I, and I wanna pull no punches. This year, I'm gonna do something simple. Uh, uh, usually, you know, at Easter, when you come to a church, this is when we have um, people flying out of the sky. Everybody gets tattoos that say he is risen. We have all of these different things that happen. This year, I just wanna present the gospel to you. And the word gospel, all it means is good news. That's all I have for you today. I have, everybody say it, good news. And I know in a world where there's so much bad news going on right now, and, and you're watching things that are making you afraid of tomorrow, I have good news. And I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, but I need the Bible to help me. I'm already preaching if you didn't know. I, I want to go into this thing, but Revelations chapter 1 verse 17. I'm going to try to do this in a short amount of time. Part A says, don't be afraid. And I'm speaking this over your life, whoever you are, that have been walking through a season of fear, that you've been walking through a season of not knowing, is God in control of everything? The pandemic, the problems, my, my, my personal life, and you've been walking through all of these different things. Things. And I want to let you know right now that God is in control. Somebody say, God is, God is in, control. in control. And the reason I need you to know that God is in control is because he says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He said, I am the first and the last. 
I'm the alpha and the omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. I've been here before the oldest person you know, and I'll be here way after everybody is gone. I am the first and the last. I'm the living one. And then I love this. God's funny. He said, I died. But look, I am alive forever and ever. And when I did that, I hold the keys of death and the grave. Spoiler alert. Jesus has already won the victory for your life. And today, I want to start off letting you know that all I want to get to you today is Jesus. I know a lot of people try to do a little trick by the end of it and they like they're like oh no today we're going to talk about better life and then at the end they want to trick you with Jesus I'm gonna tell you right up front because it's the one thing that took me from being addicted to pornography a manipulator somebody who was a liar somebody who has no business talking to you right now it took me from being all of that to not a perfect man but a progressing man and today I want to give you Jesus So for the next 40 minutes, I need you to stay with me. I promise you this will be engaging. I promise you the friend that you invited him to this and you like, please don't ruin my reputation with these people. Trust me. I got you. Okay. This is what I'm called to do. I was born to do this right here. So I'm going to help you. And I want all of us to receive a new revelation of, say his name with me, Jesus. Can we pray right now? Hands lifted all over the world. Father, I thank you. I thank you today is all about Jesus. It's all about you. And right now, God, I I thank you that all of us, we may have feelings and agendas and we may have things that we're going through, Father, and you care about all those things today. I thank you, God, that you sent an answer and a solution to every one of our problems before we even had them. So, Father, for the person who is wondering How long will they have to be alone in that relationship? I thank you, Father, today there will be an answer. For the person, Father, who's stifled by the financial debt they're under right now, Father, I thank you today you're going to send an answer. Father, for the person, Father God, who has has sins that have been weighing them down and they don't want to do them anymore, Father God, but they're trying to figure out how to live this life in a new way, I thank you that today they're going to find an answer. For the person, Father God, who doesn't feel seen, who's on their third miscarriage, for the person whose business didn't get bailed out by a stimulus package, for the person who's frustrated because they lost a loved one, Father, for the person, Father, who's dealing with the special needs child, for the person, Father God, yeah, for the person, Father God, who is standing, Father, needing a miracle in their body, and Father God, no doctor has an answer. Today, I pray that you will be an answer. Father, let everything that's said and done give you glory and use me to help your people. God, we trust you, we believe you, and we thank you for not just dying. We thank you for the resurrection. Have your way in this service today is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we agree. Will somebody give God one more huge shout? Oh, come on, give him a huge shout of praise. Amen. All right. I got a message for you right now, and I'm so excited because we have put together um, this idea that everybody that is born into this world is stained. Stained by something, stained by somebody, stained by other people's decisions, stained by their own decisions. And what I found out is that many people are living trying to hide their stains. Now, all of y'all can be fake if you want to, but the truth is there is something that is going on in your heart, your soul, and your mind right now that you don't want me to see. Okay, y'all going to be fake. Right now, I could open some of y'all phones right now and just see it. It'd be right there. You wouldn't want Pastor Mike to see it. The crazy thing about it is you care more about me seeing it, but God's there right now. He was there when the stain was made. He was there when you tried to put makeup on it and beat your face and, 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 and try to cover up the stain of insecurity. 
Oh, I'm coming straight for I ain't even got time today. I got to go right to it. He was there when you doubled down on the business because you thought that being successful in that arena would allow you to hide the very deep stains of being overlooked as a child in your family. And so now I'm going to make them notice me and I'm going to have the money and I'm going to have the car and I'm going to have the woman and I'm going to have the kids. And now you're staining another generation. Because you have been hiding your stains with things and neglecting the ones that God called you to raise. Everybody say stained. Stained. Yeah. The truth of the matter is all of us have stains. Specifically the one talking to you right now. See, I'm coming to you talking from a place of humility and a place of knowing who I actually am. See, the thing about my stains is if you don't know them, I know them. I woke up with them. I know the thoughts that I have when nobody's looking. I know the things that I watched too long on that certain channel when everybody was asleep. I know the things, the deep roots of the things that I do to be seen and to be loved. I know the places I've gone, not because I was accepted there, but because I just wanted to feel something. Stained. And I know I'm kind of heavy. And there's somebody right now that's thinking, Pastor Mike, I'm not going to take 35 minutes of this. I, I can't do it. So let me bring it up for you. I'm coming back for you, just, but just bring it up. See, I'm going to tell you something that you may not know about me. Is your pastor is a messy eater. Now, if my wife could tell all of y'all all the time she tells me, don't eat there because you're going to mess up the carpet. Or don't eat here because you're going to spill that. I'd be like, girl, don't worry about it. I'm going to do it. And inevitably, for some reason, when I finish eating, no matter how careful I am, There's always something that spills on the floor. And the reason is not because I don't know where my mouth is. I'm very aware. You can tell by my waist size where my mouth is. I know where it is. The problem is I like sauces. Does anybody like sauces? I consider myself somewhat of a sauceologist. Right now in the comments, I need you to shout out and type your favorite sauce. Come on. Let me hear what's your favorite sauce. I heard ranch. I heard sriracha, Polynesian, oh, Chick-fil-A got some sauces. Chick-fil-A sauce, you can put that on anything, even cereal, and it's good. Chick-fil-A, it was like, eh. But I'm a sauceologist, and so one of the things about when I eat and why my eating is so messy is because when I eat, before I start taking bites, I dip it in a bunch of sauce. And as I'm enjoying the delectable, wonderful, delightful, Sauce combinations that are exploding in my mouth. (laughs) Many times, there's so much there that a little bit drips off. And I started thinking about this one time that I had the audacity to wear all white to an event. I mean, I was clean, though. (laughs) Don't trip. Your boy was Clean. Period, poo. I was clean. But they had the audacity to have steak there. And when I have steak, I need my A1. I need my barbecue sauce. (laughs) This is different for some of y'all. I need my sriracha. I put sriracha on everything. And I was dipping and whipping, dipping and whipping. I was doing it. I made it through my whole meal. You know how you eat and then you check? I was eating and checking. I made it through my whole meal, got to the last bite. And when I hit that last bite, you know, sometimes you just do a little extra like whipping and dipping, whipping and dipping. I just put it in my mouth and it was like slow motion happened. I bit down. And it was like, (laughs) 
That mug went all the way down from the top of my head <laughs> to the so And literally, it was at the beginning of the event. So the rest of the night, when I went in to say, what's going on? Everybody, I looked at their face and they looked at my stain. I went in and I was like, good to see you. And I knew they weren't looking at me anymore because what once was very clean had now become very damaged by something they didn't experience, but they can see the residue of. And it brought me to the thing of your attitude that you have, the things that you go to, how you medicate yourself, all of those different things. We see the stains of what we weren't there to witness, but the proof is on you. And as I begin to look at my life, I look like that outfit. I look good on the outside until you actually get to see my stains. And I know there's some self-righteous people who are sitting there with your Easter finest on at your house and you talking about, I ain't got no stains, baby. The Bible tells us, write this down, first point, we all have stains. Somebody say, I have stains. Some of y'all couldn't even get that out because you're so self-righteous and prideful right now. You don't see it. The thing about me is I did not see the stain the way others saw it. I'm walking around with it on me. But it's evident to me when I look down. It's evident to them when they look at me at all. And the crazy thing about this life is we're walking around with people and around people and many times they see our stains. And today I just want to let you know that your stains aren't better than their stains. Yeah, I got to come set it straight from the very beginning because some of you think the little white lie is different than homosexuality. But when you go to the foot of the cross, it says that it is an even playing field. So you can be in church lying and talking about people or living in an alternate lifestyle. And God said, you're still stained. And I don't know what you've been stained by. But some of you have been stained by secrets. Secrets that are in your family right now. Secrets that even as I'm talking to you, they're touching your heart right now. Stains from conversations you've had with people. Stains from the mother that did not validate you because she knew something she didn't want. Anybody else to know? So she kept it a secret what happened to you in that house. Yeah, it, it, no, no, I know, I know, I know. I know we don't want to talk about it for real, but many of us right now are hugging people. Secret relationships. In the DMs with people. Secrets. And the thing about the secrets is it left a mark on you. And as much as I try to go away from it and only come back once a month, every time I connect with that secret, the longer it stays alive, the more I try to only do it when I really need it. It finds itself a part of me. And now I go to church on the praise team like this. And now I'm raising kids like this. And now I'm trying to do this. And the thing is now, they're nowhere to be found. The secrets go away from me in my action, but I still have proof that it impacted my life. And all I'm saying to you is that we all have stains. Somebody say, we all have stains. And I know that some of you have run so far away from that childhood past, from that trauma, that thing that has happened. But I'm telling you, the trauma was never dealt with. And so you have been affected by the secrets and the secrets have given birth to trauma. Yep. Hold on. I didn't know 
that it was going to affect me. I'm 35 years old. Why is 13 year old me coming out in the workplace? Hold on. I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought I would be okay if I just left that denomination or if I just left that church. But the secrets and the trauma now have become something that I fought my whole teenage career. And I thought when I went to college and I left my family and I left those people and I moved to a different country that it would go away. But the trauma left, but the trauma still on me. And now every Thanksgiving, it walks away for 11 months, but comes back every Christmas. Good to see you. I missed you. You're heavy. You're a weight. Let's act like everything's cool. And now the pain I had with my high school sweetheart has followed me into my marriage. We couldn't talk. So now the person I'm supposed to be with, we can't talk. Thanks for taking your stains and marking me. See, see, all I'm trying to let you know is that even the one talking, we all have stains. And maybe your stain didn't come from secrets and maybe your stain didn't come from trauma, but maybe your stain is coming from addiction. It's only every once in a while I picked up this little habit, you know what I'm saying, what's up bro? Hey, man, thanks, bro. That party was crazy last night. It was lit, man. It's the only thing that made me feel like it was worth it, bro. Thank you, bro, for hyping me up. I'm in college. I got to do my thing. I'm in high school. I got to do my thing. Now I'm in the boardroom. I got to do my thing. Man, thank you for supporting me. It's the thing that always lifts me up. And whether your addiction is a substance or a person. Yeah, yeah. No, we only connect every summer. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for giving me that high again. <laughs> thanks for calming me down. <laughs> Thank, thanks for being my peace. Wow. Thanks for being my peace. Wow. And what ends up happening is, the thing about addiction is it goes away. It goes away. But it doesn't come back to you. You go back to it. <laughs> Just needed another hit. Now I'm going to go live for God. Ah, but I just need to be touched one more time. I need to be held one more time. And now I'm going to go get married. But ah, I need to be able to make sure I try to chase that high again. And it's a cycle that many of you right now are trapped in as I'm talking to you. And I know the pain and I know some of you have tears flowing down your face right now because what has happened to you is that the secrets and the trauma have turned into addictions that nobody even knows. But guess what? It left you stay. You know, the crazy thing about it, it may not be an addiction, but all of us have idols. See, and some of you think, like, I thought idols were back in the old school days. No, no, no. Idols, when you look at the Bible, are anything that exalts itself above God. Some of you, your family is your idol. Take a picture of our family. Your relationship is your idol. Take a picture of our, our, our relationship. Our house is an idol. Come on, take a picture of us in front of our new house. Look at us. Our uh, success is an idol. Uh oh, we just made number one, number one in the world. We're the one who did it. Throw your ones up, another one. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you make bigger than God has become your idol. And the crazy thing about idols is idols stain you. <laughs> yeah. It was just that one time I thought my degrees would make me better. And so I started valuing education <laughs> over my existence. I lost relationships because I'm going to get these degrees and I'm going to make this money and I'm going to do this. And I'm not saying any of that's bad, but did it become an idol? Did it take God's place in your life? 
The truth of the matter is, it left you stained. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. Because it could have been the secrets, the trauma, the addictions, the idols, but it's on you. And this is the saddest part about it. Because none of us asked to be here. None of us asked to be here. When our mother and father, whether it was um, they had love or it was a one night stand or it was some type of uh, um, very horrific situation, we didn't ask to be here. And what ends up happening when you don't ask to be here and you're learning from other people with stains? And they tried to do the best that they could with what they had, but they didn't have much anyway. Then we end up getting stained, not just by the things that have, we've already talked about, but we get stained by neglect. Why won't you dare, dad? Why didn't you, why didn't you come? You didn't, you didn't know I needed you? And it, it might be slow interactions, but my coach was supposed to look out for me. And then you molested me. I thought you were gonna take care of me. You hugged me the same way when we won the game. And now you hug me and abuse me and take advantage of me. Why did you neglect me? Pastor! You saw how I was in the world and I told you I was going to follow you. Yeah, talk about it. And then all you wanted was my money? You wanted to use me to make your ministry big? You wanted to... You just wanted to volunteer on your team? You neglected me. Now I'm done with church. I'm done with my dad. I'm done with God. F you! I don't want anything to do. Stop coming towards me. I'm sick of this. Because you should have been there. And you should have done what their dad did for them. And their pastor did for them. And their leader did for them. And now, I'm walking away from you. I don't want to talk to you anymore. You can go to your space. But now, I'm left with the stains of neglect. And as I'm talking to y'all right now, you might have buried these thoughts so far down on the inside of you that you haven't even thought about them in years. But what I'm showing you is a physical picture of what your soul looks like. Your mind, will, and emotions have been stained. When we got to this earth, there was something that was here that messed us up and we didn't even ask for it. The biggest stain of them all, the one you could sum it up in, is sin. See, when sin entered the world in Genesis, it was the thing that would stain us forever. Don't eat from the tree, Adam and Eve. But maybe what God has for me is not as good as what culture has for me. Maybe I can do it that way instead of his way. And the thing about sin is it comes out in every form. <laughs> yeah, it comes out in every form. It, it comes out in my career. It comes out in, in, in my relationship. It comes out. Sin violates you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What sin does, it tells you to spread them. <laughs> what sin does is it pats you down. Sin comes to rob you of everything God came to give you. See, what sin does is it reminds you of your faults and your pain and it keeps you in a spot of vulnerability and it promises you everything that it'll never be able to give you. And the world is suffering from being stained by sin. And no matter what we do, we dap it up with sin. <laughs> And what happens when we dap it up with sin? <laughs> Give me the other one. Now, I'm so used to it, I start putting it on myself. 
I start thinking this is the way to live my life. And now I'm encouraging other people. Hey, bro, come get staying with me, bro. <laughs> it's only one night. <laughs> it's your birthday. Yo, oh my gosh, you just got a promotion. Let's go get staying together. Let's Netflix and stain. <laughs> Let's have children out of our brokenness and stain them. And this is the plight of humanity. We have been, say it with me, stained. I don't know what your stains are today. I'm not coming to judge you because this is an actual representation of me on the inside. The pastor. Pastor Mike. No, no, this is me. The only reason I got up in here and, and let them touch all on me is because this is what sin did to my life. I don't know why I saw that when I was five years old spending the night at their house. But it stained me. And led to me dealing with the addiction of pornography. It, it caused me trauma. It was a secret I kept from my parents. And it caused me trauma. And it became an addiction that followed me into my marriage. And it became an idol. And it was something that made me neglect the people that I love. I am stained. And for everybody that thinks that you're outside of this realm and you don't see yourself up here, <laughs> be careful that you think somehow you've, you've earned this purity position. When you were born into this world, all of us got, everybody say it with me, stain. Can you write this point down? Sin stained humanity. Romans 5.12 says, and when Adam sinned, Sin entered the whole world. And Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, including you, for everyone sinned. The thing about sin is it has affected, influenced, touched, and stained all of us. But the truth and the good news that I have for you today is that if you recognize and you are um, um, one of those who will be willing to admit that you're stained. Yeah, yeah, good. I, I, I got to go with this because somebody is still sitting there self-righteous. Look at Romans 3.23. It says, for all have sinned or all have been stained and fallen short of the glory of God. So God now, a perfect God, sees his children since Adam get stained and he says I can't leave them like that I gotta do something so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to send something to clean them up what God did is God sent sanitizer and his name is Jesus if I was in the middle of a pandemic, y'all know sanitizers businesses have skyrocketed. I'm about to start a new brand of sanitizer called Jesus. It's the greatest sanitizer in history. It's the only one that was poured out one time and would be able to clean the sins and the stains of men forever. I'm getting happy right now. Every sin that you would make, that you have make, and that you will ever make, God Sent a sanitizer. And his name is above every name. His name is Jesus. Somebody's like, sanitizer, Bob? L let me tell you what sanitizer means. <laughs> a sanitizer is a cleaner that alters something regarded as less acceptable so as to make it more acceptable. So when I came into this world, and sin got all on me. God said, I'm sending Jesus. Because what's not acceptable is this sin. But if they ever get touched, changed, and transformed by the sanitizer Jesus, it now gives them the ability to come back in relationship with me. And that's all he wants for you and me. And some of you are saying, I hear you. But you don't know how dirty I am, Pastor Mike. 
but you don't know what I've done and how far these stains go back. (laughs) I don't, but God does. And the Bible tells us before the foundations of the earth, he made this plan so that you and I could be clean. And today for everybody who has woke up this morning and tried to cover your stains and you're going to go to work tomorrow and you're going to try to cover your stains and you are raising kids with stains all over you and you are like, how can I keep going like this? I'm telling you, you can't. And then I'm begging you to understand that you don't have to. Ah. Because when God put the plan of salvation in play, he said, I'm not just going to send a sanitizer. I'm going to clean them all the way up. Look at 2 Corinthians 5.21. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right or made clean with God through Christ. Can I give you the passage remix? Can I give you the MLT version, the Michael Living translation? For God made Christ, who had never been stained, he made him take on everybody's stain so that we could be made clean through Jesus Christ. Let me show it to you very plainly. Um, just like my uh, shirt that was white, I have a white shirt that I, I, I want the team to bring out. Just bring it to me real quick. And, and, and what, what, what I want you to do is picture your life completely clear and clean. And then I want you to picture yourself coming into this world. And then I want you to picture what you look like after sin touches your life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you understand this right now very quickly. When, when, I, when I found my stains, sin came in <laughs> and it jacked me up. And this is what my life looked like, what your life looks like. Yep, a little more, a little more. Yeah, a little more, a little more. <laughs> and what ends up happening is many of us run to religion and we want to be cleaned up by religion. But all religion does is make everything dirty. So I went to the church and they were supposed to help me. And what was a few spots on me became my identity. But then God said, no, 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 no. no. I'm not just going to let them stay like this because what we want to do is get hurt and then we want to get hung back up. Forget it. I'm just going to go and get self-help, and I'm gonna read all the books, and I'm gonna manifest everything. And I'm gonna light my candles, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna smoke my herbs, and I'm gonna find peace, and I'm gonna do all of this other stuff. And it's cool, because I understand you were jacked up, and then you try something else, and you try to get in a place. You're gonna try a relationship to clean you up. Maybe if I have some kids and take cute maternity pictures, maybe. And now you can't even recognize who I used to be. But God said, that ain't going to clean you up. That's why I had to send the sanitizer, Jesus. And some of y'all are like, uh, (laughs) that looks the same. That's what everybody thought when he died. (laughs) See, back in the day, crucifixion was a regular occurrence to kill people. They would scourge people. They would hang them on a cross and they would die. It looked regular. But what they did not understand is that Jesus wasn't a regular man. That he came here and he lived for 33 years a regular life just like me and you. But he had the power of God residing on the inside of him. And when they thought it was a finish, all they did was give a platform for Jesus to prove that he was God. Hear what happened at the cross. Jesus took every one of our stains 
And he said, this is the thing that I can do. I can take the very thing that hurt you when you were a kid. I can take the very thing that happened to you illegitimately. I can take the same thing that the devil tried to use to take you out. And I can use it. This is why we celebrate the resurrection as a testimony of me making something new. Oh, you see the colors changing. This is called transformation. The reason why our church is called Transformation Church is because this is a sign of what God is about to do in your life. And he looks at all the dirt that you caused. And he says, it's not enough that you just get clean. But I want to take and I want to pour it out on your family. I want to take and I want to pour it out in your co-workers. And I want, oh, I feel the presence of God. I want to clean everything that has been damaged. I'm telling you today with everything in me, if you, has been, if you have been stained, Jesus has come to clean your life You're not too far. You're not too broken. You're not too jacked up. You haven't done enough. You are the only one that Jesus went to the cross for. The Bible tells us that he would leave 99, 99 just for the one. And this is the truth of the resurrection. It wasn't for them, it was for you. At the cross, at the tomb, and when the tomb was rolled away, what Jesus did is he took all of my stains. And he took and traded me. The brokenness that I would have. Oh, Pastor Mike, I still see a little bit on your shirt. That's my testimony. See, my garment is clean, but I never forget where I came from. See, the only way that I can be excited today is I remember how jacked up I was. So this part I left there to make sure I would never forget that I once was broken, lost, hurting, addicted, controlled. But through the blood of Jesus, he set me free. The one thing that I need you to know is what happened at resurrection is Jesus stole our stains. He stole them. The Bible tells us that he defeated death, hell, and the grave. He ripped everything that we would be considered guilty for. And he says, I'll take it. And when I think about Christ being on the cross, going to the tomb, nobody talks about how long Saturday was. They call it a good Friday. It wasn't good for him. And then there's a dark Saturday. The disciples had no guarantee he was coming back. The same way you think that your situation is ho hopeless. You got to understand that Jesus has resurrection power. When they looked for him, he was gone. He had traded the stains of humanity and took them on so that you could walk in freedom. So my question is for you today, why are you still living in shame? Why are you still living in pain? Can I say it to you very, very clearly? Why do you keep reclaiming the stains? Why do you keep going and romanticizing the years that stains you? If I was 20 again, if I was in college again, 
If I could do the marriage over again, why would you keep reclaiming the stains that he already paid for? And today, I'm asking you to exchange your stains. Jesus has already done his part. According to the scriptures, all you have to do is receive what Jesus has already done for you. That's it. That's the good news I have for you. How you looking right now? The stains that are all over you and making you uncomfortable? Jesus says, exchange me. Can, can, hey, 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 what better day than right now to trade me? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says it like this. This means that anyone who be in Christ, they have become a new person. The old has passed away. Behold, look, ta-da, I have become brand new. And this is the truth that I found out, church. I feel this. The truth is that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that will enable you to live. His plan was not just to get you from a place of being stained to clean. He said, I don't want you to be in that place no more. So he took the pain so you could be, listen to this, sustained. God is a redeemer. So he takes whatever you had and he adds his super to your natural. And he took your stain, cleansed you, turned it into your testimony. And it is the thing that will sustain you. How is Pastor Mike up here telling you? Because Revelation says we overcome him by the blood of the lamb. That's the work he did at the cross. The blood of the lamb and the words of my own stains. What I was a hoe. I did do it. I was addicted to pornography. I was a bad person. And God says that's all I needed. With somebody to accept that they don't got to wear those clothes no more. And then not to forget the story. Because what's going to sustain you is that you take the stain, submit it to him. And now God will sustain you. It reminds me of my bro Will. Come up here, bro. Will's on staff here. We're probably, um, how many years ago was it? Six years ago. Six years ago. This man was in jail, addicted to all kinds. He, he was stained. Yeah. Yeah. Today he leads our internship program. Yeah. The one thing I love about Will is he, he, he didn't forget that it was Jesus and only Jesus who took his stains and turned it into something that could sustain other people. He's teaching people who want to lead and want to do. He was in jail six years ago. What I'm telling you is you're not too far. What I'm telling you is God does not care. He is no respecter of person. He doesn't care what stains you before. Today, God wants to sustain you. Our worship team. I feel the presence of God right now. He's wrapping his loving arms around people right now. Our worship team, um, we wrote a song that talks about what God wants to do for you. And for the next few moments, we're going to play this song. And in your home, in your car, if you're watching this on rebroadcast, I don't care where you are, who you are, or when you're watching this. I believe this is a divine moment for your life, your future, and the generations to come. And I want God to reveal to you the stains that you're going to exchange today. Not tomorrow. Don't turn it off. Don't get distracted now. This is the moment that God is going to transform your life. And I want you to know his promises for your life. They're about to come true. 
And it's not dependent on what you did. It's dependent on what he's already done. God wants to sustain you. Listen to this moment.
I don't know who you are and what has happened to you and what has stained you but today I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus he's the only one that can take somebody as stained as me somebody who was addicted to pornography I've shared it and I share it every day because this is how I'm sustained I was addicted to pornography I was a liar and a manipulator will didn't just have a case I had a case for insurance fraud and God said yeah with all of that if you give me your life I will throw your sins as far as the east is from the west and I will choose not to remember them anymore and today is the day of salvation if you're in a place that you know you've been stained and you want God to come in and take away the stains on the count of three, I want you to lift your hands. I don't care who you are, how much money you have in the bank. I don't care what your status came from yesterday. Today, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you're going to be made clean because of what the precious Lamb of God has done for you. Behold, the Lamb who takes away the sins or the stains of the world. He did it just for you. One this would be the greatest decision that you ever made. Two, I know religion tells you to jump through all these hoops and change everything, but God wants a relationship with you. And the beautiful thing about God is if he has your heart, he'll help you change your habits. If you want to receive Jesus, three, come on, shoot your hand up in the air all over the world. I believe there's thousands. Oh, come on, shoot your hand up in the air. 
I believe there's South Heaven is beginning to rejoice right now. <laughs> You're getting in to a place where God's cleaning you up. Listen to me. This is your moment. Transformation Church, you already know what we're called to do. Represent God to the lost and found for one reason. What is it? Transformation in Christ. This is why we exist. And this is why God produced all of this just for you. This is your moment. Everything changes right now. Well, will I have problems? Yeah, but you'll never walk alone again. This journey is about progression, not perfection. And today, you invite the sanitizer, Jesus, into your life. At Transformation Church, we all pray together. So you already know how we do it. I want everybody to say this out loud for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ today. If you don't mind, would you just do this gesture? Forget about who's with you because they won't stand with you before God. They, they, they may not even get with this right now, but this is the decision that you're making and it changes everything. Would you just lift your hands right there? Yeah, yeah, it's real simple. This is the international sign of surrender. <laughs> if I go to any country and they say freeze, what do I do? I put my hands up. It's saying anything that I have been holding, I'm releasing it and I'm surrendering it to you. This is what God is asking you for right now just give it to me cast your cares because I care for you and I want you to say this prayer out loud with me say God thank you for sending Jesus to take away my stains today I believe that you lived and you died just for me I commit my life to you change me renew me transform me I'm yours from this day forward in Jesus mighty name amen can we give God oh y'all playing right now but thousands of people have just accepted Jesus Christ heaven is rejoicing right now and you should too glory to God listen the Bible tells us so clearly that all of heaven turns up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, over one person getting saved. I believe there were hundreds of people that just got cleansed and the stains have been removed. Today, you start your new life. I'm so proud of you. And more than that, your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life for all eternity. I want to make a guarantee. I, I, want to, I want to guarantee you something. Come close to me. Come close. I'll make you a guarantee. Okay? Listen to me very clearly. If you just accepted Christ or if you're one of those people that only come to church on Easter and this was your spiritual duty and all that, well, whoever you are, it's all good. We all stand, okay? We just, 45 minutes of stand, okay? You got it. But today, if you made a decision, I'm going to make you a guarantee. This will be the best year of your life if it is your best year spiritually. I'm going to say it to you one more time. This will be the best year of your life in business, in family, in finances, in your own soul care. If it is your best year spiritually. And I'm challenging you to get in a good Bible-based church. Keep coming back here. Matter of fact, what I want everybody who just committed their life to Christ to do, I want you to text the number on your screen. I want you to text SAVED to 828282. And we're gonna send you some information and we're gonna walk with you on this journey. Why? Because God never meant for you to go through anything alone. You need community, you need people to walk with you, and you need a church. We want to be that church to help you grow and mature. We have resources for you, but more than anything, God is the one that's going to transform your life. And today we're so excited for what God has done in you and through you. But this is the time that you have to make a commitment. This is not for today. This is for my lifetime. And that commitment Jesus has made to you and today our church is making to you and we just want you to continue to grow I want some of y'all to go back on YouTube and watch grace like a flood 
go watch marked there's message series go watch forgiveness university for some of the stuff you've been staying by you got to forgive some people some of you need to go back and watch planted not buried i'm giving you what you need right now some of you need to go watch relationship goals you know richard ricardo and ronaldo they all bad for you that's not god's plan for your life i want you to go watch that stuff and i want you to meet me here next week and every week after that and what's going to happen to you is you're going to get stronger you're going to grow and you're going to stay anchored we love you we believe in you and i want you to know that jesus is the only thing that can take away your stains happy easter happy resurrection sunday share this with everybody you know and go out and live a transformed life